Hey there, crew, and aloha. Welcome to another update of the ongoing eruptive activity happening at the Kilauea Volcano in Hawaii. I am geology professor Sean Wilsey. Thanks for joining me. Today is Wednesday, July 9th, and it's been about two weeks since I did my last update on June 24th, and we have a new eruptive episode to look at. So episode 28 began early this morning, about 4.10 or so local time in Hawaii. Uh, episode 27 was on June 29th, so in between my two updates here. And I want to catch you up on the latest, uh, look at what's happening right now with the eruption, look at some of the data as well. So again, thanks for joining me and thanks for your support. Uh, let's go right to the live webcams. This is not live. I didn't want to distract you too much uh, with my opening there. So let's go right to what's happening right now. So here is the current situation at Kilauea. Uh, you can see the sun just rising, dawn is breaking, just beautiful uh, colors there on the lava fountains and in the crater. Uh, if we roll back a bit here to the beginning of the eruption, which again, according to the USGS, was around 410. Uh, we know these, these fountains don't have like a hard start per se, so it's sort of an estimate of when uh, the main a more vigorous eruptive activity begins. But you can see some precursory, there was some gas pistoning going on where the lava was kind of rising in the conduit in the vent as gases were accumulating and that lava was cooling and it was building from below. Uh, that went on for, for several hours. Um, but then it looks like the main phase of the eruption began, yeah, right around here, 410. And as we kind of jump forward a bit here, you'll see that lava start to pour out of that vent. Uh, so the lava diffusion rate is increasing a bit as we go forward through time. Here we are about 415 or so. Uh, early small fountaining, right, coming out of the vent. This is typical of what we've seen with these eruptive episodes since December of last year. And then I'm just going to skip forward a little bit. You can kind of see here we are at 430 or so. The fountaining starts to become a little more vigorous, um, more gas pushing that lava out of the vent and the fountains get taller and taller and you can see that lava pouring out and filling in the crater here we are about 5 30 or so and then here we are um yeah about the same time they had to pan the camera back because the fountains were were too high uh and then here we are with our current live view here they probably need to pull the camera back a bit as well it's almost um you know right at the top of the view there um, so hard to estimate. It looks like it's similar to what we've seen with some of these big uh, eruptive events with fountains reaching a thousand or more feet in height over 300 or so meters. So really spectacular view there. I want to take you through all the, the cameras here. So this is the B3 camera that looks from the south rim more or less towards the north there. Uh, if we look over here at the V2 camera, this is looking from the east to the west and so this is looking from like volcano house that area you get a nice view there of the whole whole eruptive um scene with the the main vent there it's hard to say i can't tell which primary vent is producing the fountaining or maybe both of them looks like maybe there's two going off remember we have two side by side twin vents a north vent and a south vent right here kind of plastered up to that western wall of the crater and you can see the fountaining going on as that lava hits some of this here you can see this brown plume of, of dust and tephra that's also being produced there so some really nice fountainings there's the view from the east and here's the view this is probably the closest view this is from the northwest rim or the sort of north northwest rim looking down to the um I guess towards the southwest here kind of bleak view uh, but you can see all the tephra that's accumulated on this side with the trade winds blowing primarily from the northeast. We have a lot of this air-blown lava, uh, the, this tephra that's accumulated here. And I'll come back to that later because uh, there's a nice time lapse the USGS put together that shows that buildup there. So if you're just getting up and enjoying your morning coffee or maybe it's later in the day and you're just kind of uh, you know, checking this out, there's some great visuals to watch right now with these three webcams. Uh, from the USGS, so enjoy. Um, also, we have a, a thermal camera. So there's a thermal camera up uh, on the rim as well. And so you can see with the thermal camera here, the fountaining going on here, the brighter the color, the hotter. So this is in Celsius, I believe here. And then you can see the, the fresh lava flow from that fountaining vent that's filling in the crater here in the 
Um, okay, so let's look at the latest um, update. Oh, wait, first I have this, I forgot. Um, so this is a neat little graphic the USG has put together. Simple map, a map we've looked at before. Uh, so here's the visitor center here, just to orient you quickly. A uh, volcano house over here as well. Uh, the road kind of comes over here and ends at this last lookout. This is where the former, this was a former location of the Hawaii Volcano Observatory run by the USGS. And then this is where all the action has been in this Harima-Uma'u crater within a, the greater uh, Kilauea caldera. So this is where the action's been. The two dots here are where the two eruptive vents, those twin vents I talked about taking place. Uh, and this map shows with color the thickness of the lava flows that have uh, poured across and filled or partially filled in this crater floor, just how thick those are. So you can see where the vent is, they're thickest, and you're looking anywhere from 70 to about 100 or so meters, 230 to about 338 feet. Uh, so incredibly thick lava has accumulated. And this is all, again, since December 23rd. Uh, this map goes up through episode 24 so this is not current as of today it would undoubtedly be thicker so this does not take into account episodes 25 26 27 and the one that be has begun today which is episode 28 and then um some nice statistics here at the bottom through episode 24 in terms of uh, how high that lava floor is in the crater uh, how thick the lava is across the crater floor since the december eruptions began so we've added almost 230 feet of, of uh, lava in terms of thickness across that crater floor, uh, the, the area of the lava, and then how much volume of lava has erupted. Now, and again, this is a, a lower than what we're currently seeing because it goes up through episode 24. And then finally, a really a fun cross-section. If you've been following the activity at Kilauea like I have for uh, the last decade or so, you can see 2018 was a big event. The whole crater actually collapsed and made itself deeper as magma withdrew from this shallow summit area and went down the the east rift zone to the lower east rift zone where it eventually erupted to Leilani Estates and you know the big um, historic eruption we had there. So you can see the, after that collapse how deep the crater or caldera floor was, 1,640 feet, about 500 meters. Uh, it did fill with a little bit of groundwater just shortly thereafter in the next year or two. There was actually a lake at the bottom of that deep pit uh, that filled for a while. But then we resumed eruptive activity that got rid of the lake, kind of vaporized that water quickly. That 2020-21 uh, eruptive activity filled it up to this purple line here. And then you can see these subsequent eruptive ac uh, episodes and then it getting filled in over time. And currently, at least through episode 24, we're about where uh, the yellow line is here. And before the whole thing collapsed, um, that's what this gray line is at the top here. So, so a lot's been filled in since 2018, uh, but there's still, you know, uh, it's an, still an incredibly deep pit. It's a, it's a large area in terms of, you know, the its lateral extent, and so it, it would be quite some time, even if this continues, uh, before it even fills in the smaller crater, let alone the entire caldera. So I thought that graphic was pretty fun, and we're spending a minute or two on. Let's go to the update from the USGS, get this a little bit larger for you here. So this came out just this morning, Wednesday, July 9th, about 5, 11 a.m. Hawaii time. So episode 28 began 410, as we talked about. Uh, fountain vent overflow and fountains reaching roughly 150 feet. Now this is as of, you know, a couple hours ago. So obviously as we look at these fountains now, it's definitely exceeding that height. So it's definitely erupting above the crater rim. So these are probably, I'd hate to speculate, but maybe these are pushing, you know, um, close to a thousand feet, I would guess. Maybe, yeah, 300 meters or so. We'll have to see what the numbers are from the USGS. Um, yeah, uh, past episodes have produced lava fountains over a thousand feet. That's probably where we're at right now or getting close to it. High fountaining associated with episode has not yet begun. Of course, maybe now it has because this ep update was a few hours old. Um, and then wind, wind's blowing from the north northeast um, at about 15 miles an hour. And so that tephra is going to land to the south southwest, as we would expect. Um, and then they talk a little bit about the tilt. We'll get to the tilt here in a little bit. So mainly just to let people know that this new episode, episode 28, had begun. That's, I guess, sort of the crux of the update that came out this morning. Looking at some of the latest videos over the past two weeks uh, collected by the USGS, 
um, some nice videos here or photos, excuse me, of episode 27. And so that began on June 29th. You can see some of the fountaining there. Again, you can see extending well beyond the rim there of the, the crater. Um, so some nice views there. People able to watch the eruption there. This is exactly where we were able to view the eruption as well, on episode eight. So if you're in the area or on Hawaii or going to be there soon, there's a good chance you might be able to see something like this uh, walking out to this viewpoint here on the, the south rim of the crater. Um, another view there, some great photos here collected by our friend Katie Mulliken. Great job with outreach and such. Nice photo here from Katie of some Pele's hair. So in these little depressions and low spots on the, the rocky floor here, you can see these thin fibers, these golden fibers here. These are pieces of Pele's hair where the lava has been sort of strung out. Remember that lava still has quite a bit of stickiness or viscosity to it. And with the winds and the force of the eruption and the, the jetting from the gases, uh, you can get little thin fibers of glass being stretched out. They cool quickly and become very glassy. And these are these things called Pele's hair. They're very stiff. Um, if you try to pick one up, you might want to be careful because you good chance you'll puncture your finger like a needle. And these are made out of glass, so not a good thing to do. But very cool, very, very delicate and fine, um, but something you can sometimes see out there in Hawaii when there's an eruption going. So some nice photos there. And then I wanted to show you a cool time lapse that they put together um, using photos from, let's see, this is it right here. So this shows, uh, you know, with all these eruptive episodes, blowing the tephra over onto that western wall and rim of the crater. Um, basically, they've compiled a whole series of photos. Uh, so none of these show an actual eruption going on per se. So they're, and you'd be hard to see the tephra growing because the lava fountaining would block it. But this basically is a time lapse loop starting from. Uh, late December, so Christmas, December 25th, all the way up to June 20th. But the main thing to watch here is the buildup right here of all that material. You can see these hills, these tephra cones uh, building up from all these uh, successive episodes, er eruptive episodes. So really nice um, dramatic footage and documentation of just how much the landscape is changing here on that western wall. You can really see that tephra start to drape right in here. Uh, drape the walls and the rim of the crater. So I found that particularly interesting. And we've talked about this before as well, but you can see some of these uh, faults or fractures uh, across here get partially filled in with the tephra as well. So cool little video, or I guess a time-lapse uh, co compilation there from the USGS. They don't have any new videos up so far uh, on the multimedia tab, um, but I'm sure they'll get some up in the next few days or weeks. Um, and then finally, to wrap up this update here, let's look at some of the monitoring data for Kilauea. Let's start with the earthquake activity, which is pretty much business as usual in terms of what we've been seeing out of Kilauea since this whole eruptive cycle began just before December of last year. So, you know, minor amounts of earthquakes up near the summit area where the activity is taking place. Uh, the typical south flank earthquakes here as that whole unsupported uh, south flank of Kilauea sort of slowly slides towards the ocean, sort of sub-parallel to the, the east rift zone here. These, these are places we typically see earthquakes. Uh, most of these are small. Looks like these are all twos and below in terms of magnitude. The color is going to correspond to the depth. So the reds and oranges are very shallow. And as you get into yellow, greens, blues, and purple, uh, they become quite a bit deeper. And then the cluster over here, those are our Pahala or what we call the hotspot earthquake. So these are actually deep, deep earthquakes over 40, 50, 60, 70 kilometers in depth, uh, believed to be or interpreted to be associated with the magma plume coming up beneath this part of Hawaii. And then it's directed over here towards the summit of Kilauea. Some of it might also be directed off to the Northwest a bit to Mauna Loa. This is a sort of a, a cross-section of those quakes. You can see those shallow quakes where they're occurring. This is by longitude, so it's more or less looking at a transect here um, across this area. And then you can see those deep quakes down here. This is a plot of all the earthquakes over the past month. And so you can see earthquakes generally ranging anywhere from about 50 at the high end uh, to maybe 10, with probably you know 20 to 30 being you know the lion's share 
daily of those quakes. So each day's earthquake count. Um, but this is pretty low. This is pretty background levels of quakes for Kilauea. In another location, this might be you know a high level of background seismic activity. But for Kilauea, this is this is pretty quiet and pretty a much a background kind of level, not a high level at all. That's the blue bars. The red line just shows total uh, or cumulative uh, energy from those earthquakes. So if you get a bunch or you get a, a, a particularly larger one, like a two or a three, that bumps it up a little bit. So you can see that stair steps up uh, ending with today by 9th. Uh, same thing here, just earthquakes uh, with per day. So you can go over the whole month or so period and see that those earthquakes aren't really happening uh, you know, there's a little bit of a cluster here. It gets a little sparser, a little bit of a cluster there. But overall, very sort of typical background levels for those earthquakes. The tilt meters have been the most important tool for forecasting each eruptive event. The USGS has become pretty good now that we're on episode 28 of watching the tilt and basically forecasting a window at which the next eruptive episode is likely to take place. You can see these are pretty well behaved. So episode 28 just began over here. Probably doesn't show up quite on the plot just yet. You can see it just barely start to tick down a little bit there. So that eruption just began a few hours ago. But this is episode 28 here. This was 27, 26, and 25. And you can see more or less that around five micro radians of tilt, five to six or so, is about what it takes to initiate um, the eruption. So the idea here is the tilt increases as the whole volcano sort of swells with magma, as more magma moves into it, more gases, the whole thing swells a little bit like a balloon. That causes the inflation. So the blue line there is the inflation. The ground actually is tilting at a steeper, higher rate. Kind of ebbs and flows a little bit. There's somewhat of a daily cycle there, perhaps, you know, just heating of the the ground by the sun, that sort of thing, expansion. But then it reaches a climax here again, right near five or so micro radians. Uh, then the eruption begins, the lava pours out along with the gases. That causes the volcano to deflate or a little bit there. So that causes the tilt to drop. Uh, the eruption ends and then we start inflating. So then we start re-pressurizing that system in order to generate the next eruption. And so you can see that the time scales here are you know about a week maybe 10 days or so in terms of timing between eruptive episodes um and so it's become a pretty good predictive tool and so that's where we're at with the tilt so far and that's been probably the most important uh, bit of data at least with this current eruptive phase that's been going on so uh one quick look back at the webcams because we've got spectacular footage and that's probably the main Main thing to focus on right now, just enjoying this eruption. Um, really good lighting right there from uh, the, the V2 camera looking across to the west. The fountaining well beyond the rim. Check out the V1 camera. Go beautiful. So I'll keep you updated, you know, every couple weeks or so, unless things change a little bit. I'll be it's gonna be interesting to see when this how many eruptive episodes we get out of this current phase. Um what changes it? Will it be a big earthquake that changes the plumbing system? Is it maybe a, an influx of, of magma into the system that maybe changes things a bit? Is it maybe a decrease in the supply of magma? But so far since December, we're a good seven or so months into this thing, behaving pretty regularly um, and being able to forecast these eruptions pretty nicely based on this, this simple uh, be eruptive behavior that we're seeing. So I'll keep tabs on things. Thanks for your support of the channel. Thanks for tuning in here. Appreciate all you do, and we'll see you next time. Take care.